Mr. Levin. And he's going to be playing against David Williams. Not that David Williams. That David Williams right now, Ari, is getting married in Hawaii. Is he actually? Yes. Congrats. So, Dave, I know you're probably not watching this right now, but if you are, congratulations. It's been a lot of uh, magic weddings lately. Yeah. The uh, Patrick Chapin recently. Yeah, Patrick Chapin wedding last week as well. So, that's very, very awesome. I'm super happy for Dave. As for this Dave Williams, he's got a battle in front of him. He's got to beat a very, very good deck. Let's see if he can do it. Again, both these teams are 5-0. Because David Williams is going to start off with a mountain, half a turn back, Levin with an island, and we are underway in round number six of nine here of the, of the team sealed in Richmond, Virginia. Young Pyromaster for Dave Williams out of his green-red deck. Two Levins, blue-red deck, just passing on turn two. There's a silver construct I believe he drew there. There's a mountain in for two. Yeah. Gonna follow that up here with, yep, Silver Construct and just pass the turn back. So it's the 2 2 Vanilla Sliver, which leeches off, off of the rest of his slivers. Leeches off of his three Predatory Slivers. That's a lot of those. Uh, this is, and a Thorncaster Sliver. That one's a, one of the rares, so it's good. <laughs> Basically, how it works. Screen Red Deck's nothing to joke about. And it draws a shock for the turn, can clear that flyer out of the way if he wants to. Warden of Evo's Isle goes down to shock. Yeah. And. And we get an elemental. How do you feel about Young Power Master in this format? Like, obviously, everyone's talking about Young Power Master in terms of constructed and the things that it can do, and legacy and vintage and some other stuff like that. How do you feel about it, just like in, in limited as a whole? Red is short on two ones for two. Okay. It's uh, like you needed to fill the curve. Yeah. Okay. I, that's how I feel about it. So like, if you get anything out of it, like any of the elemental tokens, yeah, it's just all upside. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, another mountain, no spell for Drew. Has he got a Nefalia spell too? The Sea Skite? Sea Skite, not Spell Skite. He has two. two. Oh, there, and yeah. there's oh, one. He has it in play. And I don't think that's going to matter. Outrage. Because Chana's Outrage. I think that's a common occurrence. Yeah. Chana's Outrage taking down the Sea Skite that would ambush the attackers. How, and he's going to get another 1 1. How do I feel about this 4 power 2 drop right here? <laughs> Feels right. curve. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, it does a nice job of feeling the curve. The pyro does the young Pyromancer. Drew down to 7 already. We've, we've been over this. There's no pyroclasms in this format. No Inferno Titans. Drew's going to have to fight back the hard way. Domestication. It's a good one. It's not bad. Takes the Pyromancer. Let's see if Drew has a Shock. Yeah, Shock would be huge right now, actually. Good one in his deck. There are nine. No, no Shocks. My Shock would be a huge game if he had it, but he does not have it. Williams draws his card. He's going to start by attacking for four. We're going to put Levin down to three. Looks like the card he drew is a striking sliver. Yep. Passes the turn back. So now can Levin stabilize? He has a young power master that does not belong to him. Rare count one. Yeah. There's an island. It's like a wall of frost. Two, Two wall of frost. frost. Hold, please. All right. So he's being up. Young Pyromancer are not really in a good spot to trade for anything. Oh, no. That's, that's the game. That is a uh, Thorncaster Sliver. Oh. He's actually just going to catch Chandra's Outrage. Oh, that works, Dave. Yeah, that also... Just don't just... show Drew the additional card. Chandra's yeah. Outrage to the face. That's lethal. Yeah, and that's going to get it done. So David Williams is going to win game number one over Drew Levin. With very a very... Quickly. Yeah, like a really nice curve-out hasty draw where Young Pyromancer did some nice work there, actually. Young Pyro... So. Yeah, it triggered on three... Or on four and five. Yeah. It's not bad. That did some, it did some really, really nice work there. Jarvis U is the 17th Swamp Deck. Oh, he has another wing condition. You'll like this one. Carl You'll like Jarvis U's wing condition. Are you sure? Yeah. I'll let you guess. I'm going to guess Rise of the Dark Realms. How about Millstone? How do you feel about Millstone? Oh, my goodness. I love Millstone. Okay, that's what I thought. I actually do love Millstone. Yeah, they, they over-exaggerated. There's a Sangir Vampire. There's two Minotaur Abominations. A perfectly respectable wing condition. Yeah, the 4-6 is actually huge. You see Jarvis is actually up a game right now over wow. uh, Delzier. That was fast. Take a look at Delzier's deck. He is down a game right now. You see both of those players are sideboarding. Ford versus Moneymaker in the middle. We're actually going to cut to that match. So we'll go over Delzier's deck list in a moment. We're going to update the Jason Ford board position. He's got a Briarpack Alpha. He's got an Elvish Mystic. He's going to play another Elvish Mystic. You see a couple of uh, 
couple of lands in play for him. Ranger Scout in the graveyard. You take a look at Moneymaker's board. He's got a, a Sea Skite. Also has a Water Servant, a Vigilant Sliver, and a handful of lands in play. So some pretty fair cards on both sides of the table. What is that uh, hanging out on that Mystic over there? So it's a, uh, I believe it, there's a mountain. It looks like it's a proxy Mystic. Maybe something happened to his previous one. Ah, uh, fair enough. Jason Ford not playing with sleeves. Never does. Hates sleeves. I don't really want to. You don't play with sleeves either, right? Not that often. Ugh. I don't want to. I don't want to hurt my beautiful hands. Yeah, Mystic down. Sea Skite in. Two two sliver in. Water Servant in. This game's interesting and marginally close, actually. Yeah, I mean, it feels like it feels like Moneymaker is ahead. Um, you know, his board is better, board's life total is lower, Water Servant's proving to be pretty difficult to beat. It's so now Ford trying to figure out what he can do to try to get himself back into this game. He's going to start sending in. He's going to start, excuse me, by sending in with the Briar Pack Alpha. He's got three cards in his hand. And let's see what move Moneymaker is willing to make here. I'm putting Jason Ford on having exactly one thing. It's a good thing, but it's exactly one. You think he has exactly one thing? Yeah. All right. Or are you trying to get the re read from the booth? I'm trying to get the read. All right. I see the Vigilance creature going to jump in front. Yeah. Land. Master, Master Distraction. Yeah. Another Sea Sky. Uh, another Sea Sky. Okay. I feel like this is an Elvish Mystic that's gonna step in front of the bus. Not, not long for this world. <laughs> step in front of the water bus. Yeah. Alright, attackers are coming. Yeah, Lock. almost missed a camp block. Could not block enough. faster. Gonna put four down to one. Pass the turn back. Four draws his Giant Attack growth. Wolf. Giant. Does he have a giant growth? He has wow. a fortify. fortify. And that is going to do it. Yeah. So that was his one thing. Jason Ford takes down game number one over Nathan Moneymaker, putting it so that you, Ford, and Levin, you and Ford have a win, Levin with a loss. So you and Ford's team is currently, you could say, ahead yeah. right now. As Drew said, they put me on their backs and just run the rest of the way. Yeah, well, <laughs> to be fair, Williams' deck looks pretty gosh darn good. You might say that. That is quad quad sickness in Jarvis's deck. Just four quad sicknesses. Wow. Goes at 17 swamps. That's a number. And just he has two corrupts, no nightmares, two, two, lith two lithogy of bloods as well. Yeah, the mono black deck in Team Seal that looks to be a thing that everyone wants to do. Super popular. Maybe maybe you know base black with a small splash. Yeah. Super super popular. Today, the one though. pacifism deck we saw earlier was quite nice. Yep. So that the the triple blight caster. Mm -hmm. yeah. Two pacifisms on the splash it was a uh, Perry Frank on Pat Cox's team. Yep. yep. That team is uh, unfortunately also eliminated from contention. It's too bad. Yeah, did not win uh, a match after the one we watched. I, I didn't think their decks were that great either. To be no, fair. They, they weren't exceptional. The team they played, or was that that team they played against with the red white aggro deck? Mm -hmm. That was a nice deck. Drew Levin appears to be discarding. Yeah. Levin appears to be discarding, and Williams has no green mana. <laughs> so we're just going to play an honest game of magic here, as Levin's going to discard a Sea Skite and pass the turn back. Williams draws, and he has another mountain, five mana, pitch burn devils. Drew kind of, yep, yeah. there's disperse. disperse. He's got to hold this one up. Draw a card oh. and essence scatter, which isn't the worst draw. Good thing we uh, bounced that so we can counter on the way down. Yeah. Dave draws another green card. All right. Counter that. Can't counter that fast enough via essence scatter. So that's 11. He's going to untap. He's going to draw. Can he find a third land? Nope. Nope. But a <laughs> <laughs> he threw past the turn. Both players on tilt. Seacoast <laughs> Drake, you're up. Five mana. So now caster sliver. Yeah, so this is the, this is the angry sliver. This is one of the slivers that gets me really excited to see him play. Drew, uh... Considered attacking for a moment. Well, yeah, it, it's a matter of whether if he, uh... If he doesn't attack, the sliver has to shoot the drake. 
it's like he can have them both plus a life because the Drake would hit David for one and he'd take an additional damage from the shot. Okay. So I think he's at the point where he's just got to extend the game. Okay. You see a thorn castle there. It's only a 2 2. Here's a shock. Taking down the Drake. Looks like he might be going upstairs. No. No way. Here at 18, shock you? Oh boy. Yeah, I mean, it looks like he wanted to do that instead of discarding. I, I obviously don't agree, but I don't see a Seacrum Drake in the er, Seacoast Drake in the graveyard. So, Levin's going to draw an island. Going to pull a card forward. Going to get in there for one. Looks like he's going to play a uh, scroll. A wall of He's going to play a wall. He had the option of playing scroll thief there and chose not yeah. to. Volcanic geyser. See. Still no green source. You got two big balls of fire in that hand, though. Drew going to 15. It looks like David just wanted to go upstairs so these two volcanic geysers can threaten the end game. Drew draws a land. It looks like he's coming back a little bit. He needs red mana, of course, to be able to fully come back, but he does have another land. We do know that he has that uh that scroll thief in his hand. He also has a sea sky as well. He's going to go with Scroll 3 from past the turn back. Yeah, the uh, Sliver not on tapping this turn. Yeah. All right, the Volcanic Geyser are going to take care of the Scroll Thief. That Sliver will not untap, so Dave Williams is going to draw a card, draws a Mountain. Oh, another one. I like this game. This is a fun game to watch. Yes, I mean, he has nine mountains and seven forests in his deck to go along with the Jace Shimmering Grotto. you. And now the Mill Jace. Two, three, four, five, six, seven... Eight, nine, ten. Geyser. Yeah. Dead. Ge yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a this is a pretty good gosh darn geyser target. So mill ten. Volcanic guys are gonna take that down. Plummet the draw step here. So David Williams and I don't know how many forests were milled there, but he only has again he has, four? he has seven One, forests two, three, and a shimmering grotto. Four. Yeah. So he has four forests and a shimmering grotto left for green sources in his deck. He's gonna need to find one to be able to win this game, I think. Yeah. Jace trading for that fireball was a, a nice one. Yeah. Fireball very easily could kill him. Sliver getting in yeah. there, one to Drew's face. He's gonna get getting held by down by the wall. Yeah, gets blocked by the wall. Levin going to untap. He's going to draw. He even has a mountain now, too. He draws another mountain. So now Drew's mana is online. Yeah. He's going to come across here for one with the Drake. Going to put Williams down to 19. There's that. He's going to follow up with a <laughs> Shivan Dragon. It's actually going to be 17. Two rares. Yeah. The, the last rare was not Mind Seeker, it's uh, Tide Caster Mage. Okay, thank you. Or Tide Binder Mage, there we go. Shivan Dragon hanging out. He's old school. Yeah. He's the dragon. Drew shoving for eight with the Shivan Dragon. Plummet hanging out in the uh, seven green cards yep. hand. Yep. So now Draw. the Sliver's going to untap another red card. It's a Goblin Diplomat. I like that card a lot. I like that card a lot. I don't like it right now. No. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> Goblin Diplomat's past the turn. Sea Skite likely gonna to play. come into play. Yeah, I think he's going to play that Sea Skite. He's going to quickly untap and he's going to end it. So Drew Leffin is going to tie this one up. You know he was stuck on two lands for about four or five turns there. David Williams could never draw a green mana source. And Levin and Williams are tied now. A very unlikely scenario, I think, there. It's a very interesting game. Yeah. I like the games where both players are having some kind of issue, and they're both trying to struggle the best they can. Yeah, trying to cobble together things. Yeah. I, I think it makes for interesting magic, actually. Yeah. I always have to be fair, because both players are frustrated. Yes. You know, one player isn't just getting crushed and frustrated. Both players are just kind of frustrated and kind of laughing at each other, like, if I had green man, you'd be dead. If I had lands, you'd be dead. Well, which one of us is going to get out of this? Yeah, I think it's always fun that way. Let's see who wins that one. Jarvis U over there in the corner. I think we may be going up Playing top some to him. Swamps. Yeah. Might be back to Jason Ford in the middle. Might be up to Jarvis U. Jason Ford looks pretty ahead. Just looking at the number of things in play. Yeah, he's got, I don't he's know got a couple are. things on the table. You see Jarvis U, who we're going to cut to. You see a Minotaur Abomination. <laughs> a bunch of Swamps in play. Dalzir... Also with a bunch of swamps in play, but he has a dark prophecy, and it looks like he has a vampire warlord. I think they both have a vampire warlord combo. in play. Do you want to? Can we do a spot check for a uh, number of lifebane zombies in these decks? <laughs> Let's take a look. 
I got one here. I got zero. All right. I bet you there's zero in both decks. Yeah, I think there's one life main zombie <laughs> in the sideboard of J. Dalzier's deck. Jarvis is down to five. Whew, that's corrupt range. Yeah. Dalzier just plays the land and passes the turn back, though. Yeah, doesn't want to run the 4-2 into the 4-6. 4-6 holding down to everything. I don't think they're... 4-6 gets in. That signals another 4-6. Uh, uh, oh, 2-3. Two, two, three. Three. Okay. okay. I thought maybe we'd see another Minotaur abomination, but just an undead Minotaur. Jay kind of drawing a bunch of lands, even with the Dark Prophecy. And Jay does have one corrupt, yeah. so he does have something that can, he can I, draw to to win the game immediately. I'm kind of surprised he didn't attack with the uh, Vampire guy last turn just to draw a card and get closer to his corrupt. Unless it's in his graveyard and we haven't seen it. I think it's time for that desperate of a matchup. Uh, well, I guess he can... Uh, can, the vampire is another creature, correct? It cannot sacrifice itself? Yeah. Oh, boy. That was a good draw. Gnawing zombie. Yeah. Plus dark prophecy. I like this. I like where this is going, too. Okay. Well, they're going to pass the turn back now. A little more confident in that pass back because Jarvis is going to draw a quag sickness. If you're Jarvis, you just fire that off at the zombie right now. Right? Do you think the zombie's the one needs to die, or do you think it's the vampire lord? I don't think it's the vampire, vampire warlord. Lord, excuse me. I don't think it's the vampire. So Jarvis is going to go to four. Jay's going to draw a card and lose a life and gain it back on the zombie. Sure. Treading water. Yeah, I think the zombie's the card that needs to die there for sure. Yeah, interesting. Which one is the more problematic of the two? I think you can make an argument for both sides. I think the Warlord really gets you anywhere. You don't think so? No. I think the zombie, like Jarvis is at four. We have a Dark Prophecy in play. We can just start looping stuff and going through a bunch of cards and draining Jarvis out, I think. Okay. That'd be what I'm afraid of. You see Dalzir knock the top of his deck? Is that a Xanthor Necromancer? I think that is a Xanthor Necromancer. It's a good one. Uh, means we're... Actually. Yeah. Are we dead? We are not dead. Not we dead can just chump. yet, yeah. We can chump. You draw the card, you're off the swamp for the turn. Okay. This is really interesting. Yeah, that gnawing zombie kind of changes everything now as far as like Jarvis' attacks are concerned and you know how fast how fast does he have to move? Well, yeah, he's clocked, but it doesn't gain life back right now sure. to the dark boxes, which is really important. So the four power guys are gonna get in, right? Because he has to they have to be blocked. There's not an option. Yeah. Another another note, how many Doom Blades in these decks? <laughs> yeah, it's always something fun to look at because those have to immediately get bored out too. One. Yeah, one Doom Blade yeah. for Jay Dalzir. One Doom Blade for Jarvis U. Likely those are both in the sideboard as well. As you yeah. see, U is going to decide how he wants to attack for this turn. Again, has a Vampire Warlord, has the Minotaur Abomination, and the Undead Minotaur. The question is how to attack, and he decides he's not going to attack at all. Really? And now Zir will sacrifice nothing on his end step, so now he'll draw a land. It's a swamp. He passes the turn back. I think I would have just tried to dig through cards. Doomblade, the draw for you. Huh. Wow. I don't think that's very good right now. Quag Sickness. Quag Sickness, the draw for now Zir. Quag Sickness kills the Minotaur, or the Undead Abomination. Uh... We are... Looks like he's going to go sacrifice and... Makes a zombie. Tapped a zombie. Yep. Tapped is very important it right is. now. It is. Draws a swamp. Jay stays at four because yeah. of the Dark Prophecy. Quag Sickness takes down the Abomination. Uh-oh. So... That was a pretty... I feel like... It, yeah, that was a pretty aggressive... Pretty aggressive zombie, uh, especially because the warlord gets to crash in here, and we are now forced to. We're tagged with the minotaur too. Oh boy, I don't know about that one. Yeah, this is. I mean, this is really tough. I think the minotaur stays home. Yeah. Okay. Jarvis has come to the same conclusion. You cannot. Yeah. Do that. See that? Yeah. That's tapped. That's the big thing. Yeah. I, that, and that was the thing you pointed out right away is that the necromancer token is tapped. So he has to block now with his gnawing zombie, or he'll die. Yes. Yep. So Jarvis going to two, Jay drawing a card. 
across another swamp. Jarvis plays another undead minotaur and passes the turn. The, first, the abomination just split up. Yep. Decided they didn't want to be buddies anymore. Draws a card. It's a senior Saint. vampire. Okay. Yu's gonna draw a card. Interesting. If we had attacked last turn with the uh, two three, uh -huh. we would have would win this game right yep. now. Yep. He'd be facing lethal. Lithogy of blood is going to take care of that, and Jarvis Yu is going to take down the match. Yeah. With a doom blade to spare. <laughs> so he wins two to zero, and it's going to put his team up a match right now. As you see, Jason Ford in the middle. You see, neither of those players are playing right now, so we'll see exactly if. Ford has already like won the match, or if they're going to be going to a third and final game, because you see Moneymaker is shuffling his deck a little bit here. And then Jason's. Levin versus Williams, they're in game number three. Jay Ford looks like he's kind of hanging out, not really doing much. He does look like he's kind of hanging out right now. Doesn't look especially too. happy. It looks like he's signing the slip. Looks like he wants to get dinner. Well, <laughs> it looks like this team may have taken it down, but we're going to cut over to the Levin versus Williams match right now. You see Levin and has the Ogre battle master in play. One rare. <laughs> but he's at two life. Williams with a Chandra's Phoenix, a Pitchburn Devil, and a Predatory Sliver. And of course, a Chandra's Outrage in the Graveyard. You see Levin at eight. eight. Williams at 20. So Levin has been on the defensive this game yet again. Especially with the Chandra's Phoenix and the Pitchburn Devils in play. It looks yeah. like we're going to be uh, having to conserve our remaining life total. Yes. Especially because Williams showed us two Volcanic Crisis last game. And don't forget, the Ogre Battle Driver has the ability to turn a game around very, very quickly, giving all oh, the yeah. creatures that come into play haste and plus two. For example, some Shivan Dragons. Yeah, it has the ability to turn a game around in a hurry. You guys can see in the middle there on the scoreboard, Ford did win his match 2-0. So the team of you, Ford and Levin, are going to move on to 6-0 and right now in this nine-round tournament here in Richmond, Virginia. But Levin is going to finish playing out his match, get some more experience, Learn some more about the format and what his deck is capable of. Most likely, play it out for personal pride and not getting made fun of by his teammates That's the rest of the day. That's very, very important. <laughs> very, very important. See Root Wallet here drawn for Williams. Interesting that the uh, the battle driver, the ogre, the ogre battle driver, when you flash in a C, uh, C kite, okay. plus two's on there too. Yeah, four, three. Lock down whatever you want. So here comes the Pitchburn Devils, and it looks like here comes the Chandra's Phoenix as well. And the Predatory Sliver, so everybody is coming in for Williams. You see Levin reaching immediately for four mana. Gonna yep. play the Sea Skype. Gonna get plus two plus so from the trigger, which he acknowledges. Williams says that's fine. Now let's see how the blockers are gonna go. I think we're gonna see... Uh, she to think this one over, because he is very close to dead. Hey, you have to be super careful about Pitchburn Devils and the fact that you mentioned that there are two Volcanic Geysers hanging out in Williams' deck. Yep. So it looks like Drew is just going to make the immediately profitable blocks. This looks like a Disperse. Okay, so Ooh. Disperse is actually quite good here, I yeah, think. Yeah, that was exactly what he needed. Yep. Okay. The board has been stabilized. Loosely. Yeah. I mean, Levin cleared everything up that turn. It looks like Pittsburgh Devil is going to be played post-combat for Williams. It is. So if you're Levin, everything went right that turn. Okay. Enter the Dragon. Volcanic Eyes are the draw. He, dragon. he does have a dragon in his hand. He also has a messenger drake in his hand as well. I think it's the dragon. I want to play the dragon. Do you want to play the dragon? I want to play the dragon. You want to play the dragon? Yeah. Shove. Yeah, you know I mean, dragon will come in with plus two, plus oh. That'll make it a seven, five. And then it'll, it, it can pump it with a mountain to make it eight damage. And he agrees with you. Yep. There is that. He's going to come in with everybody. Whoa. That's aggressive. Let's see. So. I just want to think about the clock here. So the dragon was seven this turn, nine next turn. He has to deal an extra four. So the sea kite definitely had to attack there. It has to attack this turn and next turn in order for it to be the exact one. And the pitcher devil goes upstairs, doesn't take care of the uh, the sea kite. Well, you see why? Yeah. There's a shock and there's a geyser. And two plus three is dead. One two one. Yeah. So if that's a, if there's a shock and a volcanic geyser, he has a, Williams has enough to kill him. Yeah. Assuming I mean. Again, you can't take anything for granted. He has to figure that out. Yeah. That, that, that he can actually do it. Because it's like, it, it's kind of backwards, right? Like the fire like, streaker earlier. Yeah, it's, it's kind of backwards because like you, you're, looking, you're, you're looking at it and you say, I can fireball you for four. That's not five. 
Does, is that a fireball? The last card's not a fireball. It's a okay. Th okay. It's a Thorncaster Sliver. That's what it was. So there's a Tusker, which is a three mana, which is a two mana three three. Shock and then a you. shock. Get back to Phoenix. So get back to Phoenix. Okay. The chump block. Okay. Still battling. Yep, yeah, and still, I mean, still drawing to both geysers. Levin gonna untap at three life, but ahead on board as a Shivan Dragon and the Sea Skite. Gonna draw a card for the turn. You see that he has a wall across the volcanic geyser of his own and now an island in his hand. His geyser can be for five. Yeah. Uh, there's no way you can kill Williams this turn. I do not think so. Not at all. The dragon's still coming in. Interestingly, I think you might have wanted to attack with both, actually, because that forces the block. But if he doesn't block, he gets to fireball him out. No, he's short one. My counter one, two, three, four, five. Okay, you're right. You're short right. One. Yeah, short one. Uh, so I think Levin's going to drop five. Messenger trade. Yep. Pass the, the turn. Okay. So you're saying he could have for he could have forced through two more points of damage. Plummet. Plummet. Okay. That's a pretty big draw. He can make the now he can make his turn be Rutuala. Well, Drew is blocking. Plummet. Yeah, he's definitely blocking. Drew can't block fast enough. I mean, he's at three. He's gonna draw a card. Would I like to block or would I like to die? I don't really know. It's hard to tell. So now here's a Rutuala. Yes. Do you want to plummet now? No. No. Okay. You wait, right? You want to get Drew to commit his mana. Yeah. There's just always that fear of getting counterspelled. That's canceled? All. Yeah, canceled, negated. I think there's a decent amount of value to getting Drew to commit his mana here. I don't know, maybe I'm... I feel like I'm being biased here by knowing the contents of Drew's hand. Sure. So here comes the dragon, here comes the sea sky, and you see Drew separating his mountains right now, so... Whoa, Drew, yep. you're supposed to Volcanic Geyser, because yeah. then that happens to you. So now if that gets bounced, wall cross, pass the turn back, and again, if Williams ever finds a geyser, he wins the game immediately. Let's see what he draws this turn. He draws a mountain. Okay. He's tapping his mana. Three, five. Sliver enters There's the, the battle sliver. Field. Williams. Not the best of tapping there because now Root Wall can't pump. Not that he can attack with it because he's yeah. wall across, but now he can't even rap he can't even represent a pump. Drew one mana short of including the land that he just drew, he's one mana short mm -hmm. of fireballing for the win here. So mountain comes into play. His geyser can be for six. Crossy attack from the sea sky makes it seven eight, which for you math majors out there is not mine. Drew domesticating the sliver. All right, so he's gonna take that. Opting to play the regular rare instead of the mythic rare Jace in his yeah, hand. Yeah, does have Jace in his hand right now. This game's not going to decking. This game's not even going anywhere past next turn. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, that's what um, that's what Drew's hoping for. He doesn't want to go anywhere. Well, doesn't want to go any more turns. I mean, either Williams draws the fireball, or Williams gets fireball. Yeah. All right, Williams draws his card. It is a forest. He doesn't know that he's dead. That sure doesn't. Passes back. It's like, we're wall, we'll block down the guy, and we'll all be good. And Drew's hand is rare, rare fireball, and... <laughs> 11's I mean, got one heck of a deck. Yeah. Sea Kite. Coming across for two again. Dropping Dave to seven and one, two, or this should be dropping down five. To five. Yes. Yep. Drew's gonna slow roll here. No, I think I, I mean there's no reason not to do it in his upkeep. No. You just just wait. Yeah. You're under no pressure. Yeah. You don't have to move. No. You don't have to fireball him on your turn. You can fireball in the end step if you want to. You can fireball whenever you feel like it. He just doesn't also, know the cards. I mean, also, like, he could he could be scared of Wild Ricochet. Yeah. Which is actually, like, a very real thing. Yeah. Like, you, like if you're sitting at home right now, you're saying, why, why isn't Drew fireballing him? Like, he's just dead. Like, if Drew thinks that his opponent has Wild Ricochet in his hand, he has no reason to actually make a move. And it feels like, to me, that he thinks he has Wild Ricochet in his hand. Yeah. Oh, no. That was a mistake on Drew's part. He's supposed to leave it up because now Williams can draw a fireball of his own. Yep. Just go to the face. Another root wall for Williams. For a game where someone has a lethal fireball, 
He's pretty casted. I mean, it, yeah. if as you said, and he's gonna ting him for one. Yep. As you said, if if you have a plan or you think that you you think that your opponent has something, then you try to play around it. Now he's <laughs> just gonna fireball him out. Yeah. Ting you for one. Okay, yeah. fireball you yeah. after. All right. So a lethal fireball is gonna get the job done. So Drew Levin is going to win his match. His team is gonna win three to zero. So the team of U Ford and Levin move on to six and zero. Oh. Very uh, impressive. Drew waited for mana to be spent on a root wall pump to take him off Wild Ricochet. Okay, sure. There we go. That's what it you was. Know, it, it's, it obviously looks like kind of curious for like people who are watching at home or you and me in the booth. It's like, okay, why aren't you?